Hi, my name is Jennifer Parks. I'm going to start the stream a little bit early. I want to sort of zoom in here. Um, it's my first time doing a stream. But um, please let me know if you guys cannot see me for whatever reason. Um, I've got a comment section. Wonder if it's working. Go live now. All right. Hello. Again. Okay. So I don't know what I'm doing. Let's do this. Where did I go? There I am. Okay, so again, my name is Jennifer Parks. I work with South of Valhalla Crafts. My husband and I created it um, as a sort of task at hand um, to keep us busy and sort of challenge us. So, I apologize for the music in the background. That's my husband's choice of music. Favorite choice of music. Uh, anyway, so um, I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about what South of Valhalla does and why we got started. Um, we started a couple months ago and our goal was to sort of become a little bit more capable of doing various things that interested us. I wanted to provide myself and my husband with uh, products that did not have a bunch of alcohol in it and additives as far as um, lotions were concerned and bath products. So that's sort of where that got started. And I started with soaps and I gradually moved on to things like candles and lotions and bath salts and sugar scrubs. Um, so over the course of time, obviously our products have grown exponentially, but um, you know, we're still a home run business. So it's, it's very, um, very busy. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of our products, sort of discuss them a little bit. I have my handy dandy notes for for me to kind of keep it short and succinct. But basically, um, to start off with the soaps, um, we use organic soap bases, all right? So those include, but are not limited to, um, goat's milk, shea, cocoa, um, oatmeal, and then also clear glycerin. I'd say by far the shea butter uh, soap base is probably your um, most soft and moisturizing soap base. It's also going to be used a lot quicker than, say, um, your goat's milk or your cocoa butter. I'd say cocoa is in the middle um, in terms of softness. Still moisturizes a whole bunch, it lathers up really good. And then um, the toughest one is gonna be your goat's milk. So that's gonna, gonna be a lot longer lasting, but it's not gonna have the same sort of um, feel on your skin when you're using it. Um, we also use 100% essential oils um, from doTERRA and Young Living, and those are the most reputable companies as far as providing 100% um, pure 
essential oils as opposed to other oils that might have um, external products in them. They're not actually pure. Um, in addition, a lot of times we use vitamin E. It's very well known for um, nourishing the skin, but then it also protects the skin from things like um, things like damage from the sun um, and uh, from the wind and stuff like that. Um, if we make anything with color in it, we use a food safe option right so we have a wide variety of colors if you look at this it's it's pink we also have green orange blue your standard color selection um, and I also try and mix them up so if for some reason there is a darker blue or or a lighter purple it's because I vary the the formula and I'll combine colors to get kind of a, a difference there um, and then some of our stuff we actually put, um, like our soaps, for example, we put dried flowers in it. And what that will do is that will exfoliate the skin. Um, it's, it's obviously tougher than the soap base that's used or the, the oils that are put in and mixed in when you're actually cooking it. Cause I do hot processes, get into that later. Um, but yeah, so that will exfoliate the skin. Um, kind of like a sugar scrub will and of course uh, the rest of the ingredients will actually moisturize and protect the skin after it gets exfoliated. Um, a hot process basically means that you're melting down all of your ingredients together. So you're melting your wax, you're melting your vitamin E, um, all of that. Your, your oils will be added afterwards um, when the temperature goes down because basically if you add it while it's hot it is just going to burn off the fragrance and you're not going to get the full effect of the fragrance. Um, for us, we only use a couple of drops, certain scents like eucalyptus, for example, is a little bit stronger. So even though we only use a couple of drops, the eucalyptus, you'll really smell. Um, something that's a little bit more subtle would be like a serenity, um, for example. That's an essential oil blend from doTERRA and I really love it. but. It's a mixture of a lot of different things, and I'll get into our essential oil mixtures later. Um, secondly, we, we started making candles next. Um, our candles come in a variety of sizes, and I've got some here to show you. Um, to go back a bit, your soaps come in smalls and large. The smalls are $6, the larges are 8 um, So it's a very reasonable cost. Um, candles, we have multitude of sizes, so 4 ounce, 8 ounce, 12 ounce, 16 ounce, and then 32 ounce if you want something that big, but that's really big. Um, for this we use soy wax, alright, it's an organic wax. We'll use one of two different, um, waxes. The first is soy 444. That's a much tougher wax than, let's say, the 415. So those are our two waxes. The 444 will actually burn slower than the 415 because it is, 415 is a, is a softer wax. We use 100% cotton wicks. Um, and with the wicks that we have intentionally selected, they do not burn black, meaning they will not pollute the air or color your wall or um, what have you. I actually have one here and it is no longer burning because it ran out of wicks. But um, it's sort of like my tester. What I do is I put different um, scents that I have access with and I just sort of put it together all in the same jar and layer it on top of each other so I get to test out all of our different waxes. But anyways, this is going to be your four ounce size. This is this particular candle is called Black Sea. It's a fragrance. What we do is we use fragrances and on some cases uh, essential oils um, because obviously our fragrance collection is not quite as big as our essential oil collection, so in order to give some variety for our customer base, we use both. Um, 
mainly though what I uh, what I've started to do is use fragrance more than I use essential oils because of the cost fragrances are a lot less expensive um, but for something like this for the for the four ounce it's gonna be five dollars the next size up let me see if I've got this one the next size up is going to be your 8 ounce, right? So it's just twice the size of your 4 ounce. This one is garden mint, but um, obviously you can't smell it. But that's your candle. It's got a really strong smell, but it's not as strong as something that you will find in a supermarket. So for example, um, when you walk by an aisle with this kind of stuff in it, it's not going to bombard you three aisles away. Uh, it's simply got enough to fill a fragrance or um, smell to fill a room. And um, then it will uh, it'll dissipate. But you won't be, again, bombarded by the smell. The next size up is a 12 ounce, right? So here's the 8 ounce next to the 12 ounce. Um, the 8 ounce is $10.00. This one is going to be 15. Uh, this particular one is eucalyptus. And um, yeah, so this one I've actually used coloring for this. And the coloring that we use is actually a mica um, powder. It's a really, really fine powder. Uh, and so when you're burning it, a lot of the mica that we have is actually metallic. So you see kind of like a metallic color. Hold on one sec, I got one burning. Or that was burning. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's got definitely a different color to it while it's actually burning. I don't know what happened. There. I ran out of wick. Uh, sometimes when you're burning things over and over and over again in the same candle, uh, that happens. So. What I do is I just drill a hole, put another wick down there, and it works fine. Um, so, right on. And then the 16 ounce that we have, they're actually flatter, but they, um, they are 16 ounces, I promise you, because I, I weigh out everything, and I measure it, and um, I use a ratio when using um, essential oils or fragrances, and... Um, right, so, yeah, so 16 ounces is going to be 20, and then your 32 ounce, which is a massive jar. I really don't know. Hold on one second. This is going to be your 32 ounce jar, right? So 12 ounce, 32 ounce. This one's going to be 25, but it is massive. Um, it's so massive, in fact, that it is the size of a Nalgene. So, yeah. I don't have any of those made already, just simply because of the sheer size of it, but I can easily make um, one for you. Our candles are actually cured for at least seven days. Um, again, this is this is made with a hot process, right? So I'm melting down the soy wax, and I'm using um, the coloring. I'm melting all of that down at the same time, and then after I do that, I wait until it gets down to a certain temperature before I add the essential oil or the fragrance, the actual um, hot mixture. And the reason I do that is because a candle will lose its fragrance if the soy wax and the fragrance are combined too soon. Um, if I make a large batch, it could take up to one or two hours for the wax to cool. So if I were to add it in the time that it was cooking or shortly thereafter without it being that lower temperature, it would just burn the fragrance off and by the time all said and done, the candle will be a lot weaker. Um, as I said before, I already use a limited amount of fragrance. So, um, again, waiting until that cooler temperature is essential. And then once I hit that temperature, I'll add the fragrance and then I'll wait for it to get about 10 degrees cooler than that 
before I pour it in so that it doesn't damage the wick and bend the wick because it is really essential to keep the wick in the center of the candle to provide uh, a safety hazard kind of preventative factor. Um, it, if the wick is not burning in the center of the candle, you're more likely to get fires and stuff like that on, on items that you may have around your candle when you're burning it. Um, so those are candles. The next projects that I started on were bath salts. And for our bath salts, again, we use as few products as humanly possible within our actual salts themselves. So we use Epsom salt, which is a well-known component for um, sore muscles. It helps release the tension and the ache in your muscles. And then we combine sea salt with it, um, and we add a little bit of baking soda. And then after that, we use our 100% pure essential oils. And if we are doing coloring to them, we'll add the food safe coloring so that it's all the same. And those come in the same sort of sizes. So usually I'll do a four ounce and I'll do an eight ounce and I'll do a 12 ounce. Um, and the reason for that is simply because um, for gifts, it's a nice idea to combine some different things together. Um, and the respective prices are again, five, 10 and $15. Um, the sugar scrubs are also made with a minimal amount of ingredients. Those, we usually use a brown sugar with them, um, the essential oils, and then also what's called a carrier oil. The carrier oil is basically going to help combine uh, the different uh, ingredients together. And it also can be an oil that has appropriate, um, sorry, beneficial value right so you can use coconut oil or olive oil um and i also use grapeseed oil and i'm about to get in i think some avocado oil right and so all of those different oils will help not only combine the ingredients and help break down the essential oils so that it is skin appropriate because some of them are not um and it'll also give moisturizing properties to the actual mixture itself some of them coagulate, um, give me one sec. Some of them coagulate, so they look like they're solid. And what I do is I'll just put a little bit of water in the top and that will actually break down the coagulation so that the next time I use it or the first time I use it even, it will be a bit softer. So things like olive oil, for example, Right, um, right, so you've got your olive oil, and like I said, it gets a little bit thicker, right, and it looks sort of solid, but because of the ingredients, that's exactly what happens, and this one is Melaleuca, um, but this is an example of an oil, I believe it's coconut oil, but it stays in an oil form. Now what the sugar will do, these are both four ounces, they're five dollars, and again it'll go up by five depending on whether or not you want a four, eight, or twelve ounce. Um, the sugar scrub in and of itself, the sugar will work as the exfoliator in the combination and then the oil will coat your skin um, with sort of a protective layer, same um, with a vitamin E and whatnot, it'll help nourish your skin and also protect it. Um, you will be smooth when you use these for two days afterwards, guaranteed. Um, I use these all the time. I also use our soaps and as you saw, I like candles. So, um, and then I also use the lotions. The lotions are great. I have little samples. All right, so the next thing is the lotion. Um, for the lotions, you only need a small portion of it. I have a sampler for craft fairs that we just did, and literally these tiny little squares are all you need for one, um, one use. And they are made, right now we have raw, unrefined shea butter lotions, but I'm also getting in some coconut 
uh, coconut butter or cocoa butter, excuse me. Um, and then also some, I want to say mango butter is what I've got planned after that. Um, but I've done a lot of research on the different options that they are, that are available. And then also, um, I make sure to get an actual organic product. So all of the bases for our lotions are all organic. Um, in addition to that, what also goes into it is again your carrier oil, so your coconut oil or your grapeseed oil or even olive oil is what I've used. Um, they do also include beeswax and then your essential oils. So again, that carrier oil is um, assisting in breaking down the um, intensity of the essential oil and then the beeswax is used to sort of solidify everything. I make lotion bars. I don't bother to whip it. Um, you can do that, but I find that the lotion bars are a lot easier to use. Um, and that is simply because if the moisture sort of gets to it, like right here you can see there's a little bit of residue in the corners and such, you can just stick it in the freezer and save it. Um, it also cuts down on the amount of glass jars that I have to use um, in order to uh, sell products. And I just figure that uh, that's easier. You can keep it in a soap dish. You can keep it in the bag that it comes in. You can keep it in a Ziploc bag. But quite literally, all you need is a tiny little square. So I know it's a revolutionary idea to not use cocoa butter that comes out of a jar or a container, but I I actually prefer it. Um, saves the product. You don't have to worry about the residue being in the jar afterwards um, because you're you're ideally you're using everything um, everything on there. I mean, you might get a little bit of residue on the bags if you use bags, but for a soap dish, it's too easy. Um, and those are relatively inexpensive at Walmart or wherever you want to go. Um, but the bars are actually the same size as the large soap and they're, they're $10 a piece. And the reason why, I mean, it's a steal, but the reason why is because of the cost of the organic products and then also, um, the time spent working on it. I also use a hot process for that. I melt everything down together and then same as the candles and the soaps, I wait until it gets... A little bit cooler before I add in the essential oils if I'm going to that way it stays um, the fragrance will stay in the actual product themselves so I want to talk about kind of like the carrier oils that we use we use grapeseed oil because it helps regenerate your skin cells um, it'll also help reduce scars dry spots um, itchiness any kind of um, psoriasis it helps relieve, relieve that. Um, kind of the flaky look. Uh, it also helps with, um, again, providing a safe sort of uh, combination of the essential oils and the carrier oil in order to allow essential oils, certain essential oils to touch your skin without damaging them. Um, coconut oil we use because it moisturizes the skin and it's also really great for damaged or dry hair. So what I do is after I put on a little bit of oil, I'll sort of comb it into the ends of my hair to help save them from split ends. Um, and it uh, will also help reduce visual scars on the body um, and marks, right? Um, so... Those are the two main oils that we use as carrier oils. But uh, your essential oils are all derived from natural plants or flowers, so they are legitimately just pressed down and um, sort of smushed into its own um, natural form um, when it is, is put under immense pressure. So um, a lot of them will actually help uh, for specific reasons, and I kind of wanted to go into that. Um, 
So we have a blend called At Peace, and it is from doTERRA, but it, it contains floral and mint oils so that it will actually help release fearful, kind of worried and anxious feelings and replace them with contentment. Um, it's well known for that. So what I will do in the shower is I'll use, let's say, an At Peace blend for my soap and then I'll use a different type of thing for my lotion, right? Um, a lot of times with essential oils, you find a lot of them help reduce stress. So if that's something that um, sort of ails you, then you can use multiple products in different flavors or scents, and it'll help sort of relax you. I also have what's called a, an Aromas Touch Blend. Um, from doTERRA. It is a combination of stress relieving um, oils, but also helps work on relaxing the psyche. So if you've got a significant life event going on, it really does help you, um, excuse me, sort of relax. I've got a balance blend. And again, it's great for establishing calmness. And it also helps harmonize the physiological systems of the body and promote tranquility and a sense of balance, which is why it's called a balance blend. The At Peace blend, to go back, is made of vetiver root, lavender, frankincense, sage, um, and spearmint. Your aroma's touch has cypress, peppermint, basil, grapefruit, and lavender in it. And then the balance blend has spruce with something called hoewood, which I'm not sure what that is, but frankincense again, um, chamomile, and coconut. Then I have what's called a Breathe Easy Blend. It's also from doTERRA. And um, these oils in combination with each other help open up the respiratory system. Um, they also help combat airborne bacteria and viruses that can be harmful to the body. So those um, oils would be eucalyptus, peppermint, um, melaleuca, which is also known as tea tree oil, uh, lemon, cardamom. I'm not giving you every, every oil that's in there, just the, the well-known ones. Um, I've got a gathering blend from uh, Young Living. And it sort of aids you in focus and reducing the ever ever present stress of every day. So that will actually be a combination of lavender, black spruce, geranium, frankincense, sandalwood, uh, cinnamon, and rose. I also have what's called a Melrose blend, and that's Young Living as well. It works to it's a it's a general cleansing blend so all of your physical psychological emotional sort of issues that will help you with that so for example me i'm going through medical issues right now and so i use this one in order to just try and and get relaxed when i'm stressed out about everything and this is a combination of rosemary tea tree oil clove um so those are Obviously, another relaxation blend. Probably my favorite one is called Serenity. And this is your, your literal stress and anxiety relief. Um, this includes lavender, Roman chamomile, um, Hawaiian sandalwood, and vanilla. Um, and I believe vanilla is unique to this blend because it is not in any of the other blends that I possess right now. I have another... Young Living Blend, it's called Release, and it promotes harmony and balance, and it aids in letting go of anger and frustration, and it is made with um, olives, geranium, sandalwood, grapefruit, tangerine, spearmint, lemon, so a lot of citrus, um, but it also has jasmine and rose in it as well. Um, and then the last blend that I have is called White Angelica, and it is from Young Living and it facilitates feelings of security and optimism. So it has almond in it, it has myrrh, geranium, sandalwood, um, coriander, black spruce, and rose. So then I have a bunch of 
regular essential oils and you can find more specifics about this on the information that I've posted up on my my Facebook page and then also my website I'm not gonna go through all of them because I feel as though that would take up too much time and you can just read it yourself um, I also have the blend constitutions up there and then I also talk about some of our fragrances or more popular ones so cinnamon helps with breathing it also helps your immune system and physical fatigue Um, right, so then I have blue spruce and it aids in asthma, bronchitis, and the flu, so, and it also encourages focus. So if you want to sit there and light that next to you, you'll, it's almost like an essential oil. You feel kind of calm and relaxed and such, um, and it is like, um, eucalyptus in that it will help boost your, uh, respiratory system and I have gingerbread it's actually great for um, it's actually great for it's actually great sorry I'm getting distracted it's actually great for um, morning system uh, morning sickness nausea and vertigo um, so next we have sandalwood it helps relieve confusion fear they say it helps relieve hiccups i haven't tried that yet um although my cat gets hiccups in the morning every single time she eats and she has like three breakfasts so maybe one day i'll light that for her um but it is used also in excuse me developing memory and then also um uh meditation practices the next one that I have, I've got this one and another one, Teakwood. It's a nourishing and refreshing additive for your home. So it is going to bring that sort of um, it's going to bring sort of that outdoorsy kind of uh, at home nature, dirty hippie kind of thing. Uh, and then lastly I have Vanilla. And it, it works to, to just provide calming again. Um, <laughs> I have other fragrances as well. And those are all listed, again, um, under the information part of our website and our Facebook page. Um, so, again, I just sort of wanted to talk you guys through all of the components of everything that we offer. We also offer leather um, works and sewing items, and I'm going to show you a couple of those things. Um, husband made this wallet. He does all of our stuff. Um, and it literally is just your typical wallet, but it can be used for men or women. Um, right now, the pouches are really, really tight. I will give you that heads up, but over time, leather will actually expand. So, even if things are a tight fit right now, it will loosen up, I promise you that. Um, so there's this one. This one is $20. Then we have a hairpin. Um, the reason why we called our business South of Valhalla is because we are both Viking in origin. My husband's Norwegian, I'm more um, Scandinavian, but uh, both Viking through and through. Uh, and Valhalla is sort of like their heaven, um, as long as you die an honorable death. So, we have put on this, it's a hairpin, but we have, my husband did a snake design, and it's actually a Viking snake design. And um, this is, is $15, this little doohickey here. Um, you use a Chinese chopstick, right, as the pin, and it just sort of goes in your hair like a clip. For all the females out there then we have these very more simple wallets right I've got another one here and basically we this one just has one pocket right and they're for ID cards 
and if you want to fold up cash you can put it in there and then also bank cards right so this one has three pockets actually there's one on the back side one in the middle and then one on the front side as well uh, and then there's this fabulous green one that's the same three pockets right so you've got one two and then three on the back and those are all ten dollars a piece and then we have another Viking snake design for a leather wallet, right? There's two snakes, one on each side, yeah. And in the inside, again, it's just a simple fold your cash, stick your ID bank cards in there. Um, on this one is 20 bucks as well because of all of the etching. All of the things that I'm showing you today are, are made from cow leather. Um, right, so this is a little bowl. It's a little dish, again, with a Viking snake sign. Um, it's about an inch high, right? All four corners have been stitched together, hand-stitched together. And this is, um, just sort of a, a coin dish, a wallet dish, key dish, something that you can throw your keys in when you get home, um, uh, rather than leaving them on a table or something like that, you've got something to confine all of your change in or whatnot. So that's that. That is $20 as well. And the prices are all based on the cost of leather and how much time it takes to make it and also the supplies. Um, right. So, next and last, we have... A dish right with an insert my husband calls it a gamer bowl but that's because he's a gamer so he does like D&D &D, right so you, you have a spot for your dice and then you I like to think of it as monopoly for your cash you just keep everything together your little tokens things you move around the board and then the cover of it, of it actually has a hand etched hand hand stitched to uh, design around the edges, right? And then it has a Viking raven on it. And the ravens are said to escort individuals who have died a really good death up to Valhalla. So we put that one on there. It's Odin's raven. He's seen in a lot of folklore with, with uh, ravens. So this one is $25, oh shoot, this one is $35, um, yeah. So that's all I got for you today, at least right now, and um, I'll probably be back on here in a bit, but if you have any questions, feel free to text me, feel free to message me, comment on the Facebook page, um, and I'll see you guys here in the afternoon. Have a great one.